guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And on this episode of How Do I Draw, or How Do I Paint, which is more accurate, <laughs> we're going to be painting Punisher. Now, over the weekend, I spent maybe a day, a day and a half max, watching the Punisher, and it was incredible. Like, I couldn't stop watching. It was like crack. It was like candy to a little kid. Like, oh, I gotta have it. <laughs> it was amazing. It was gritty. It was disgusting. It was raw. It's got blood everywhere. So you, you definitely want to guard your kids because, you know, it's not a kid's show. Not by any means. Um, but with all that said... John Bernthal did a phenomenal job with the, with his role as as Punisher. Um, I, I didn't know how well he was gonna do like you know standalone, but after seeing him on in the second season of Daredevil, I was like, oh man, I gotta see more of this character. They have to do something. So I got so hyped when I saw that they they were, they were actually giving him his own show. And it's not disappointing at all. Like, it was incredible. Some parts that, like, were very slow, but even though it was slow, it was kind of purposeful. So it, it kept you moving along, and you never felt like, oh, my God, this is tedious for no reason. It's all story, and it, it has a lot of layers. So it's really, 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 really worth watching. Um, so with all that said, um, I'm jumping right into it, and this time I decided that I was going to try to do a different kind of painting. This one would be a little bit more fine arty, as I've <laughs> said before, you know. In the previous video with the Porgs, I did this very simplified color layer th action, but this time I was going to attack this from a different perspective. So what I did first was do a very light, rough... Uh, line drawing just to get the structure of where you know the basics are I used a picture of John as uh, my reference because you know I wanted it to look like him so rather than just go you know off the cuff and just make my own version of Punisher I actually wanted him wanted it to look like him so that's why you see him standing to the left and I like again I didn't zoom in or zoom out, zoom out to try to get like super detailed I stayed zoomed out so that I could really focus on broad strokes as much as I could because I think I find that I have a tendency to really like hone in on details and like I'll get stuck in in one area and then I'll render the crap out of one spot and then I'm like okay now that I've rendered this area everything else doesn't look like this now I'm screwed so <laughs> I said all right I'm gonna attack this in a different way um, so first you're gonna you still see uh, um, to the right there's the, the layers and I, I created a black paper layer um, by the way I'm, I'm working in clip studio paint as you can see on the top left um, and I, I created I, I made the paper black the paper layer black and then I put all of the, the you know the drawing right now is on its own layer and then once I start uh, coloring it in I'll, I'll paint that on another layer and maybe along the way I'll add another layer just to like try to uh, avoid damaging certain things that I, I might have painted first and you know eventually I might merge them down and then do it again but I'll do that as needed it's not really like a um, the technique to it per se I just feel like sometimes that saves you a bit of time if you want to like really broad stroke something or or like let's say you, you want to do like a, a nice clean line on something and you don't want to get into oh my god I have to recolor the, something that you've colored over I would just do it on another, another layer and then maybe erase that area or what have you now <laughs> I don't have a lot of experience doing the, you know, this kind of fine arty painting. Like I, I, I started doing this with the other landscapes, so I guess it's kind of the same. But I, I really find like people are my Achilles heel when it comes to painting. I don't know for some reason. Maybe it's just a mental block. You know, my mind says, "Oh, it's harder," but I can't, it's not really harder. It's just different. 
So I get psyched out and I'm like, I end up spending so much more time trying to figure it out. Um, so notably in, in Clip, Clip Studio Paint, two major things. One, Clip Studio Paint has like this feature where it, it smooths out your line. So you don't, you, you don't get as much jitter when you're working. Now, also you should note that I'm not using uh, a pen to screen tablet. I'm actually using uh, an Intuos Pro tablet that is not drawing the screen. It's like I'm drawing on my desk looking at my screen. So I find it very interesting that you can still achieve certain a certain look even though you're not necessarily drawing directly on the screen. I think for a long time, for many years, I thought that, well, that's my Achilles heel. I can't possibly draw, draw or paint as well as people that uh, draw directly on the screen because it's, you know, one-to-one -one contact rather than, like, I guess, twice removed, so two-to-one contact. So it, in this case, um, I just want you guys to know that you know, it, 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 you can still do it with either an Intuos Pro or a, 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 a Wacom Bamboo or whatever, whatever expense level you have. Because, you know, everyone is different. Everyone has different lives and maybe they could only afford the Bamboo. And then you're thinking, damn, I need to get that, that Intuos or I need to get that Cintiq in order for me to, like, be able to draw like this. It's not true. You can do just the same. It just takes a bit of a learning curve to get used to not looking directly at what you're drawing. And then, you know, you fiddle with the settings, like the the, um, the pen settings, so like it's not too slippery or it moves too fast when you, um, when you move the pen. I generally keep it like maybe in, directly in the middle or one, one notch slower. Or is it one notch faster? I don't know. I can do a, um, a different video on that at another time if you guys want. If you want me to do that, hit me up in the comment section and I'll I'll try my best to explain it. Anyway, I'm I'm, work, I'm also working on a Mac platform, so I mean, it might be a little different on PC platform on Windows. So the the major thing to 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 note here is that I'm only using two colors. And by two colors, I mean it's only black and white. But I'm also, like, if you look on in the, um, I know it might be moving fast, but if you look at the toolbar on the left of the screen, you'll see that there's, like, the one that's highlighted is, like, a big, looks like a big marker. And that literally is the marker tool in Clip Studio. And it's, what's beautiful about it is that there's a certain level of transparency built into that tool. So... All I really did was create three different head shapes of that marker. So I, so it was not completely round, it was oval. And, and then I rotated that oval, one right, one left, and one flat, being horizontal. And what that allows me to do is create different planes and get in with that marker at different opacities and um, and really just finesse the the values now um what's really dope about that the marker is that it's based on pen pressure and so the more you press the the more opaque it's going to be and, it, and it's also a thing where if you let's say you press down lightly and you go over an area it'll uniformly um, fill in that area at that opacity and then if you press a little bit more it gives you a little bit more um, more opacity so it makes it more opaque and, and you can play with the, the variations there there's a lot of, of give you know what I mean so essentially I when things got too bright I come back with the black and then hit it with the soft transparency to mute it back down again. And then if it got too dark, I'd come back in over it with the white. So you're going to see me do that over and over again. And sometimes it'll get too flat and come in with a little bit of white in certain areas to lift it back up. And then it would get too bright and I'd hit it again with the black to try to hit, you know, push it back down. 
So this technique again is different from the the landscape technique in that when I was doing with the landscape, I was selecting different grays and trying to build value with the light. I mean, with the light, the midtone, and the shadow, and then maybe an ambient or you know varying degrees of grays. I was literally selecting those colors. Whereas in this case, I'm only using white and black at different opacities based on pen pressure. So this technique is a little bit more finesse. It's a little bit more by feel. It's not like by colors or by, in this case, you know, grays. So I, I liked it. I liked this technique because it, it you naturally felt it. It felt better. It felt like you were, um, you had more of a connection with your painting because you can feel how much you were giving it or taking away from your light. So definitely give it a try. This program is awesome. It's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth, because it's, it's different. I mean, Photoshop probably has the same kind of feel. But like I said, this is like intrinsic in, in the program. It's already built in. It's a default tool. So you don't have to get funky with understanding all the nuances of breaking down the brushes. And I mean, Photoshop is great for that because it, it lets you go crazy. But unless you, you, <laughs> you really know how to engineer and, and fiddle with it, you're not, you don't know what you're reading. You don't know what you're looking at. And that you probably need a whole YouTube video just to figure that out. <laughs> Whereas this, it's like, it's in, it's built in, it's intuitive, you pick it up, you try it, you fiddle around, you, you'll see, you'll see me playing with it, and you'll say, oh, okay, I see how that reacts. So, it's definitely worth um, trying it out, and what have you. So, I mean, I pretty much went through the whole thing this way, and then there's a couple of different other brushes where you can do splatter effects, or, um... I don't know. I, I think you might be able to see it later, but if you don't and you just need me to break it down or talk about it, let me know. Um, this is already getting really long, so I'm going to cut it now. But you guys, if you have any questions or you, have, you need any help, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support, and and I really, I'm really, i excited to do this. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.